any place where you where you're going to need to disconnect periodically they're way better than any kind of friction fit connector hello and welcome to another one of our ask the expert sessions here at boat how to i'm jan attenstedt and we're talking to nigel calder Hi. today we have a question about electrical systems again and the question is what do you think about using insulated crimp wire ferrules with Wago connectors for low current circuits? The ferrule crimped with the adequate tool should reduce any oxidation of the cable. Is this ABYC compliant? So first, I think um, a European audience will know what we're talking about here. An American audience probably won't. Uh, Wago is a style of connector which has been very popular in Europe for a decade or more and is slowly filtering into the US boat building world. And they make some really neat, compact ways of mounting electrical systems in panels and on a rail. A lot of them, you have a spring-loaded connector where you push the conductor in there and the spring holds it in place. On those, you should be putting a ferrule on the tip of the conductor before you push it in there. Although on many of them, you can actually get the conductors in without a ferrule. So now we're looking about is this ABYC compliant? And the answer is yes. Um, we looked at these things probably a decade ago and decided that they were okay uh, as long as the spring pressure in there is just making the connection and, and it's not an integral part of the connection. The question mentions oxidation of the conductors. So I think probably untinned copper conductors are being used here because that's when you get the oxidation and it would be much better to use tin conductors, which also are very widely available in the US and not so much in Europe. But if you're doing wiring jobs on a boat, it's well worth going to the extra effort and modest extra expense of getting tin conductors for this work. So yes, it's, it's a great way to go. Uh, it's a good idea to put the ferrules on there and it will be ABYC compliant. And just a note, if you're using, there's also the small version, like the one where you can connect three or more uh, wires together with the Wago ones. And they actually have a, some sort of a special that you can buy extra, like a special box that's filled with gel and if you put that around the connector, then it's supposedly even waterproof. I mean, I would not install it like underwater, but in case there's like any chance of this connection getting wet, I think that's also a really nice uh, piece of kit, especially if you want to mount navigation lights or something like this in areas where there might be water tripping down. I've had good experience with that, so check that out. That's really cool. Those are Wago connectors with the levers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Spring loaded yeah. connectors are, are terrific for replacing any of those connectors where you have a spade that goes into another fitting are the uh, quick disconnect fittings. Over time, you, you disconnect them a couple of times, they lose their spring tension and, and then they make a very poor connection. Those uh, Wago connectors are terrific because you just pull the little levers up and pull the conductor cell if you want to break the connection for any reason and then you just push them back in and put the levers back down again. Also really handy for things when you run wires up the mast that you need to disassemble. Yes, or... yes. any place where, you, where you're going to need to disconnect periodically, they're way better than any kind of friction fit connector. All right. Well, with that said, um, actually, we do talk a lot about connections and how to make sure they're safe and standard compliant uh, in our courses, um, especially the Boat Electrics 101. So make sure to check that out at boathowto.com and see you in the next session.